Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad-free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to... uh, Well, we form you. birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday. Andy. 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 Well, he's got 10 days. That it, was the creepiest thing we've ever done to anyone. Yeah. And that's saying something. If, if if something that like uh popped out of my cake and sing that. Yeah. Like a slurnax. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be human that would yeah. sing that. No. It would but, be a it, creature. but it would be wearing lingerie or the lingerie equivalent of its species. Certainly something from a, a, a something slanty world. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. From Glornax Secret. Yeah. I will like put it back in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that cake's not done yet. <laughs> you put a toothpick in it, and a little bit yeah. of alien blood comes out. <laughs> so, um, we we're doing staff picks, and uh, it's Andy's pick. It was my nose. He's picked a booger. So yeah. we're going to talk about Andy's booger later. <laughs> uh, Andy also had the roulette movie. Who double duty? It's, yeah. an, oh, it's, it's all Andy all day. It's an Andy's double mint. Um. Yeah, so speaking of Andy, he has COVID, we think. So that's why you there <laughs> Kelly and Andy are on, on Zoom instead of being here in person. Remote again. So Yeah, but I won the I won the COVID lottery for an OTLP. Hopefully. <laughs> you sweet boy. Yeah. We don't know if we have it yet. I'm getting tested tomorrow. But do you feel bad? Uh, do you feeling under the weather? Yeah, I do have symptoms, but mm. th- they're cold symptoms which are also the same as COVID symptoms. So. Yeah. All you can hear it in his Who voice. Knows. Yeah, you can hear that thick, snotty smell in his voice. Ooh. That's Lerona, baby. <laughs> I thought it was sexy, but it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I just woke up sexy. Uh, I got COVID. and my pillow was gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not like crazy. He did have a contact with somebody who did test positive. So okay, we're not like loser liberals who are like, oh, he has the sniffles. I think he has the Rona. I gotta get off social media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Ooh. What a hellscape. Ooh. Yeah, it's like Ooh. he's he's double vaxxed and boosted. He still got it. Like, yeah, I still got it. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't. I can't get it, bitch. Yeah, but he's podcasting. <laughs> yeah. You would be in the hospital. Yeah, dumb dumb. You would be in the hospital, dumb dumb. I <laughs> hope you understand that. Yeah. I was I was thinking about this. I remember during the height of the t- pandemic. Um, I also was in contact with a person that got COVID. Then I was in contact with Freddie and Amy. Yeah. Yeah. And I was so scared that I killed them. <laughs> I called them up crying. Yeah. It, because, well, at that time, you know, like. And we were, nobody was vaxxed at that point. Yeah. This was before vaccinations. Uh, when I just tried to scrape Andy's doorknob off of my screen because I thought yeah. it was a spot <laughs> on the, on my, on the Zoom. <laughs> I thought Andy's doorknob behind him was a spot on my screen, so I tried to scrape it off with my fingernail. But what's nice is Andy's like, hey, fuckers, you want me to come breathe in your face? No, he was. he's, like, not, you he's not crying you now. You're very responsible. You know what? Yeah. You told us, and then we were able to um, postpone an appointment we had that was close contact. So you per- possibly protected three people, yeah, well, four but people we, so far yeah. that I know of. <laughs> but this time I didn't feel as bad as before because everybody I know has been vaxxed and boosted. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I have confidence that if I do have it, 
I feel confident that it would just be, you know, a nasty, a nasty cold from everything I'm reading. So I'm going to trust that. Oh, those nasty colds. Ugh. And we have a medicine cabinet full of mm. ivermectin. So we're going to be fine. <laughs> I heard I'm supposed to start drinking my own urine now. I saw people putting it in their eyes. Oy they. I think it's a beauty treatment or a detox treatment. I, I don't, don't understand. So their eyeballs would be pretty? And they're red. Why it do makes you your think, eyes real red. Why do you think <laughs> that your body excretes it? Because it doesn't want it. Yeah. yeah. So don't put it back in. That's why it's called waste. <laughs> That's what that word means. It left yeah. your body. Your body was like, nah. Well, I remember. And you went, no. Give me back my stuff. <laughs> I did my research. <laughs> yeah. well, well, there was at one point on Jerry Springer's show, he didn't just do trashy people. Uh, he did informational programs sometimes. Oh. And at one point. Uh, he had this guest on. It was like a Dr. Oz type. Yeah. And, and she said for acne, you're supposed to rub your morning pee on your face. It's always Dr. Yeah. Oz types. Yep. Yeah. He's, <laughs> run, he's running Oz for types. office. Yeah. I know. Isn't that terrifying? Yeah, a little bit. Clay There's Aiken's no running for office too. There's no reason to rub your piss in your face. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. It makes like, your face smell like piss. It's like, it's like salt. <laughs> yeah. And just smelly toxins. Well, that at that point in my life, I had acne, not bad acne, but Did enough where, but I, at, I was like, God, I want to look better, but I'm not going to rub piss on my face. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Jerry Springer. I, uh, I used to take my I'm glad shit, you didn't because that yeah. definitely didn't work. And then I take that shit and I smear it on a basketball and then I throw it in the neighbor's yard. Did that really happen? Sort of. It's it's half based on a true story. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Not my shit. Someone rubbed shit on a on a basketball as a prank on me when I was a kid. And then that's they, pretty, you know, you do the check thing. That's a disgusting prank, but also brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it, had, it was human shit. <laughs> because when you think about the damage a basketball can do, think about all the ricocheting and yeah. just... <laughs> And, and just the rubber stamping it could do with that brown ink. Just just think about the fact that I now have hepatitis. Just, just, just notarizing driveways and kids' hands oh, yeah. up and down the neighborhood. That's, that's what is happening with this pee-pee face stuff. It's the same thing. It's the same childish instinct to play with your poop and your pee. <laughs> No, Freddie, didn't somebody? Oh boy! Didn't somebody in your childhood shit on a cracker and try to feed it to you? The same one who did the basketball prank. <laughs> that, oh, so sh- that that was that person's stick uh, shit jokes, right? Yeah, yeah. Try to feed me a shit covered saltine. What'd you God, do? I'm, I'm What'd I do? Never, I'm uh, glad that person never came like a comedian, Ila Gallagher. She's hilarious, actually. As an adult <laughs> now, she's hilarious. She was hilarious then, but it wasn't my brand. I didn't want to be victimized <laughs> by human waste. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But I guess like uh, Gallagher passed out um, ponchos to his first couple of rows, at least, didn't he? Uh, Where did she yeah. get the shit from? Just her own butt? Uh, probably. <laughs> she was hardcore. I mean, like, <laughs> Amy knows this person who I'm talking about. She's lovely. It, That's she's intensely great. hardcore. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, we were kids, and she had a fucked up sense of humor, and she shit <laughs> No, I, I'm just saying that's that's fucking intense. That's way to go for a joke. Even yeah. as a kid, that's too, yeah. that would have been too rich for my blood. I would never. <laughs> I would yeah. have folded. I knew when to fold them and when to hold them. Do you do you do you guys saw the uh, are you no? I mean, uh, scary stories to tell in the dark movie mm-hmm. they made. No, okay, it, I didn't like it very much, but. It had some moments. It had its moments, and then it was on. It was on just playing on TV or something, and I got sucked into it. And was do you remember? Shit, was there a shit moment on that? Sh- yeah, on that movie? I forget about the incredibly gross shit moment in the movie where the kid is, oh, is he fishing. He lit the bag up or something. Well, first he's fishing his own shit out of the toilet with like uh. the, the the goldfish thing. You take dead goldfish mm. out of the tank with. You forgot this happening in a movie. 
I forgot this happened in that movie. And oh my God. I would never forget something like <laughs> and that. And then like there's that a whole too- it's disgusting. There's a whole sequence where he puts it in a paper bag and there's like oh. greasy stains on the outside oh. of the bag where Are it you looks sure like this was a, this was scary stories to Todd. I'm positive. Dark. Yeah. Were you watching a Todd Solon's movie? No, it that, that this movie starts so strong. It's the scary stories movie. When it starts, if they had just leaned into that whole Stephen King angle they were going for, uh, plus the human shit part. <laughs> The human what? shit was very like fifties style pranking. I feel like like burning, like throwing human shit is seems very quaint. <laughs> hey, hey, do you know what I mean by that? Sure. Oh, so your friend was channeling fifties uh, comedian. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a very old school. I mean, it's probably the oldest form of uh, primate hu- humor. You know, that's how we probably relate to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find poop funny too and farts hilarious, but yeah. like Kelly said, that's a, a bridge too far to actually. You notice how Andy like kind of ranked the one that finds it the least funny <laughs> amongst this group. He's like, I find poop funny. I find farts <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> well, that's true, right? I mean, poop is funny, but it's also gross. Like, yes. poop, it's, it's, poop it's, can't it's, be hilarious. But it can also be shocking and terrifying. Like, Poop showing up somewhere is like, this is not an everyday situation, no matter what. And it could be hilarious, or it could be 21 days of solo, and you're feeding it to Italian teenagers, and it's just, it's a nightmare for everyone. Like, it just, oh, what's, but it's, just, it's never a dull time when shit shows up at a party. Yeah, well, what's funny, or poop or shit? Freddie and I were just talking earlier. Um, since it's gotten cold, we've been real lazy about picking up dog shit in the backyard. And oh, Freddie, yeah. Freddie's like, okay, we're going to, now that it's all frozen and easier to get, let's uh, let's bet on how many pounds we're going to get out of <clears throat> the backyard. And I said, but how are we going to weigh it? So, Andy, this is where your luggage scale comes I need in. you to bring over your little <laughs> luggage scale uh, handle thing. So but, we can weigh dog shit. But only yeah, after what, you're done with COVID. No, so somebody has to get on the, your your scale. I'm not bringing it in the house. I'm not bringing that outside and putting it near a bag of shit. And then, yeah. no, and then no, you uh, hold it. You yeah. get on the scale and yeah. then you just hold your hand out and yeah, you do the, all the shit in there. Yeah. And then I put all the shit in your hands. <laughs> no, I want to like, use... just hold your hands out. You stay on the that... scale and I will dump a bag of shit in your hands. <laughs> yeah. That way the scale doesn't get dirty. <laughs> do you think if, if Indiana Jones had used a little bag full of shit instead of a little bag full of sand... <laughs> The, the trap might have held, and he might have just walked out of there. That's yeah. what he—that's what he should have done. And if he had accidentally got a little a little shit on the idol, you know, like and when, <laughs> then uh, Alfred Molina wouldn't want to touch it, and yeah, the whole thing Bella, would have turned out differently. That, that should have been the gambit. He could have just smeared some shit. Shit solves both <laughs> problems. Yeah, it, exactly. It solves the trap and it solves your Molina issue. Mm-hmm. He's got yeah, a bad Molina. <laughs> So shit protects in some ways. Are you suffering from Molina? <laughs> <laughs> so like uh, to protect your kids, just smear shit on them and they won't be kidnapped. Yep, and, that's true. And sex trafficked. I mean, no one wants see? a child covered in shit. I feel like that's true. <laughs> Not even Except for the people who do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. My mom used to um, use almost like an entire uh, can of hairspray on my hair when I would go to summer camp so I wouldn't get lice. This is Florida. And hi, Elise. Oh, hello, Elise. So as a preventative measure, every day I would go to fucking summer camp with fucking hair sprayed camp. hair as a, as a precaution. How is that, that any worse? Does that work? Wouldn't the lice just stick to it? Your child was shit. I don't know. I don't remember getting lice that much when she would Wait, do that. Smearing. You're asking which is worse between smearing shit and using yeah. hairspray? <laughs> Yeah. Probably shit. Smearing shit's worse. Well, you didn't see what my hair looked like, and then you didn't have to be in that room <laughs> I with would that guess. aerosol can of Breck afloat and everywhere, inhaling it. You just mean from a health, like what would be uh, more of a hazard to your health? Yeah, if it doesn't get in your mouth, shit's not going to hurt you. Yeah. yeah. you're. I guess you're right. If it, does, if it gets in I'm your eye. I'm just traumatized by the hairspray. Or your ear. If it gets in your mm-hmm. ear hole. All right. Are we? You done? don't want poop in any hole. Any hole or mucus membrane that you have mm-hmm. keep shit out of them patreon.com slash notlp it's good advice help us uh keep the shit out of our holes and mucus <laughs> membranes 
<laughs> we uh, we just put we, out. We can only afford soap. <laughs> we put out, <laughs> and toilet paper <laughs> because we, of you. <laughs> we, <laughs> we we just did Origins uh, 175. Kelly did uh, the intro for that, so check that out. And also, uh, it's Kelly's week to ask the question for Topic Canna. Do you want to tease it? Yeah, I won't just tease it, baby. I'm gonna give it to you all the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, give me. One to a few of the very first movies you remember not liking in your youngest days. And if you can only remember back to last year, that's okay. Whatever the earliest movies you can remember not liking, hit me with a couple of them. I, I, yeah, that's how that comes out when you're choking. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, uh, Water went down the wrong pipe. Would you like to move on? <laughs> I'm glad it was water, not poop. Oh, yeah. gosh, he's dying. All right, we'll be right back. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. It's not going to be our tornado. It's just a thunderstorm. Everything's going to be okay. Why weren't you answering my calls? Look, I'm sorry. I just... I think it's an EF5. It's an EF5. It's like when two tornadoes come together and they form one giant tornado. Mom, I think something might be wrong. It won't open. A tree is blocking the door. Can't we just break the door down? That thing is made of solid oak. I can't just punch through it. it doesn't make any sense. What doesn't make any sense? We have neighbors. Someone would have come. They're all dead. Why would you say that? What if it wasn't just a storm? Not a tornado. Something else. I was scared. Scared of what? Of you. We did something bad. I'm totally entranced by that. that I want to see that. Trailer looks great. I love uh, an apocalypse movie. It all it kind of has got a real uh, ten Cloverfield Lane vibe to it. Yeah, yeah the trailer totally. trailer was great. Uh, oh, Andy! Oh no! Andy hates everything. Movie, not so much. Yeah, I was. Um, I was distracted by Pat Healy because I was like, uh, when did he become Bill Burr? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> they do I look the a lot same, like. I had the same thought watching the trailer, but he looked very intense. He didn't look like goofy Pat Healy. He looked like. You oh, know. you should see him on uh, that show, Intense. Them, I think it is, on Prime. Yeah. I mean, he plays a very bad dude. Yeah. Yeah, bad dude. <laughs> a bad dad. <laughs> a bad dad. He's mad. <laughs> but it was fine. He doesn't just look like Bill Burr. He is channeling Bill Burr's character, the dad character yeah. from Efforts for Family. <laughs> oh, well, there's a new season of that we need to watch. Yeah, even down to uh, like the short sleeve and the tie. Oh, my goodness. You're right. I, 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 I feel it was very deliberate. Yeah. I don't know. It was like spot on. The, the anger and the cursing. And was, does he ask if they poured a, if they poured water down the back of the TV at any point? <laughs> <laughs> like he does have that that you know uh dad energy in mm -hmm. this movie the intense dad energy but that was a little bit distracting but uh intense dad energy it, he, like he was the best part of the movie like yeah. how, like how he is with most things he's in um, the movie is, the premise is that there's a tornado and this family has to hide out in their bathroom. The biggest bathroom you've ever seen in life. My Lord, you saw the trailer. It's a big ass bathroom. That right? was all the bathroom. Yeah, 
I thought it was the living room. It had a library in it. (laughs) Man, I'll tell you, like those tornado siren noises they use in the in the trailer, like that's almost like triggering a little. It's a very unsettling. And it's not like it's gonna be the noise of the zombie sirens as well. So just be ready. So you don't know. Is it is it tornadoes or zombies? It could just be a diarrhea outbreak. It can be any of those things. (laughs) It's just a bad sound. Hopefully it's, like, it's not all three. It's like madness. Oh no, a tornado full of poo and zombies. Oh no, diarrhea, mm-hmm. zombie NATO. <laughs> or, do, or do the zombies have diarrhea? <laughs> They're you just know, like, I mean, like, really. I feel like they would. Once the tornado really starts whipping up, <laughs> you don't know what's tornado, zombie, or diarrhea anymore. <laughs> it's just a big brown death it's knell a, it's a big, yeah it's a, a swirling slurry of stuff Ugh. yeah that's what that's what they call it the great brown death knell of uh some call it odd, the great chocolate six. cornetto <laughs> they're like look at that cornetto out there is that chocolate no so it why, isn't why is the bathroom the most safe place is it the bathtub is that why if you don't have a basement They say go to to like an interior space, but also the bathroom. Is it because of the, it's gotta be because of the tub. I think it's because it's built tightly. Isn't it also, I think that it's usually located near the center of the structure, the bathroom. is. Okay. So like, I think that's why they say that, but who knows? Who knows? I was remember being told to go to your, your bathroom with a mattress and laying the, I was told to go to your bathroom with a mattress. (laughs) That's it's the safest place. We got Andy's played. Bathroom. We got played. <laughs> so it's a tornado, right? Uh, and they're in the bathroom, and um, I guess the rest of the house is shorn away, just ripped apart from the rest of the house. Uh-huh. And they're trapped like a tree falls in front of the bathroom. Does it make a sound? And and who knows? Nobody saw. And it blocks the door. And they can't get out. And that's the whole movie. They're just stuck in the bathroom. And I thought it was kind of like going to be a dead end type thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just feeling that too. Like we were all dead when you were the describing, the I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, they all had heart attacks on the toilet. Cause mm-hmm. they, pushed too, they pushed too hard. Yeah, don't push too hard. I kind of want to watch this, even though I know you didn't like it. It just... Um, I love this sort of thing. There are parts that were genuinely scary, and I wish they kept it contained to just the bathroom, but they just did all this backstory. (laughs) Famous last (laughs) words. I really wish this could have just been contained to the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) But it it, it got out. (laughs) It's everywhere. It's everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh listener i hope you weren't listening to us as you were going to sleep oh god uh, yeah that was unintentional by this like i didn't that was so sincere trying to re- review it that was the funniest the thing you've ever said but um i wish they contained to the bathroom but <laughs> there's like this backstory of why they're stuck in the bathroom it uh, was the taco, taco bell ba- oh! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Freddy's having too much fun. You're going to kill Freddy, and yeah. you got to be careful. So um, it's that thing where it's like kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just should have kept it. Cow, you know how dead end it was just in them in the car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And things happening around them. And just, that's a very simple story, right? Yes. And when it was the bathroom stuff, I liked. <laughs> I love the bathroom stuff. Andy loves the bathroom stuff. That's what, if you ask me what one thing I could say about Andy. Were you, were you hoping the toilet would drive down a highway in the woods? <laughs> like, like hidden away, a real quaint, like desolate place. Like somebody could drive along in the tub and the other person can sit on the toilet. <laughs> or just a toilet that's married to Lynn Shea. Yeah. <laughs> Ray Wise voices the toilet. <laughs> driving a car. And then Just she's, in the she, toilet that's married to Lynn Shay. <laughs> and then she's rubbing, she's rubbing her butthole like, Ooh. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. That's a deep cut for anyone who's never seen Dead End. Mm-hmm. 
Go go right, go right now. Stop what you're doing. Go see Dead End. And it's don't easy see. to find. Yeah, it's all over it the wonderful. place. It gets. I get. I okay I get for a it, while. It was hard to find. I get it advertised to me all the time on many different streaming devices. Yeah. Not devices. Uh, platforms. So yeah, so there's um, <laughs> kind of like a backstory with the teenage daughter. There's witchcraft involved that goes awry, uh, and it's uh, very angsty teen stuff. Yeah, she's trying you know, to use the witchcraft to get concert tickets. <laughs> she tried calling in the radio station, but that didn't work. <laughs> uh, it's just that stereotypical witch stuff. The angsty teens and so she called the radio station and there, <laughs> the the question was like, "You've reached WDRM, the dream. Are you calling from your imagination? Answer correctly for tickets to see Hootie and Guns and Roses together for the first time." That's the that contest is, that she's that trying to dream. get, but she used dark. Magics to get it. Which stuff seems like 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 that seems like such a weak reveal for like that trailer. Like to think that in the end, it's because some teenagers dicked around with witchcraft. Whatever yeah, is happening, it is. Like, it's <laughs> that's what was written on the back of the Constitution. Like I like they don't that want you for to some know. things. It, yeah, that's probably true. It is. It's a. Uh, in, it's in that movie. Uh, I like witchcraft in movies. I do too. But it should be the main point and not um, a side story. Yeah, I, I like witchcraft like it, in movies, but not in our schools. I ha- <laughs> I haven't obviously seen it, but again, like I said, just seeing like that feels like such a cheap like. All right, now we just need to come up with the thing. What uh, what's cool? I don't know. Like uh, what? They could be witches. Oh yeah, it's cool. Let's do it, witches. Like I feel like they just. You know, I would have. They liked, were like uh, a fart away from being goblins. I don't know why am I criticizing this movie? I haven't even seen it, but uh, okay. I I do feel like that would have I would have been disappointed to find that out. Yeah, it was when they went to the witch stuff. It was just so dreary and serious, as opposed to the more whimsical, scary stuff that was happening in the bathrooms. You could say it was curious. <laughs> you know, the whimsical, scary stuff that happens in the bathroom. Whimsical. Yeah, yeah in frightened. The bathroom. In the bathroom. I love a whimsical bathroom experience. So, Andy, not a recommend that? Yeah, it was just uh, the weird juxtaposition. The tones didn't fit. But there are good points in it. There were, like, points that were generally scary and Pat Healy's always good. Yeah. But other than that, I it's a slight no recommend. It felt right. long. Right no. Okay, well thank you so much. Yeah. Keep, keep it in the bathroom movie. Keep it in the bathroom, am I right? Always. I have this here jag in the box that we're gonna virtually pass around because we are virtually together. <laughs> That's oh yeah. Virtually. Lovely. Who gets to crank it first? Why, I believe it's me. Crank it, girl. Let's crank see it. what your cranking has wrought. Yeah. They wrought shit. All right, we're going to bounce it around to Freddy. Harry Palms, don't fail me now. Crank it, crank it, crank it. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Yep. I feel like the <clears> sheriff <throat> was in my head there. Whoa. The sheriff is always in your head, yeah. man. As the long chief, as you have sheriff. memories of the sheriff, he's always with you, man. <laughs> all right, Friday. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Your movie film is on Shutter. It is called Mass Hysteria. When Cats I... and dogs living together. Yeah. Is that what it's about? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. Uh, when a tourist dies on Halloween night in Salem, the crowd seeks justice by mounting a modern day witch hunt. Oh, our, fun. Our wrongly accused heroes, a troop of witch trial reenactors, flee as another tourist dies than another, making it clear there is much more than. Oh, this is much more this than looks just some funny. This guy just cast. It's, a bunch of, it's very witchy in the old uh, roulette uh, castle this month. You got a witchy roulette. Witchy. 
That uh, sounds like something you would order off a menu down in like New Orleans somewhere. A witchy roulette. He want a witchy roulette. Make sure put extra <laughs> pot <of> sugar on. <laughs> Mochillo. <laughs> oh, Cajuns. Uh, you guys, <laughs> you ready? You ready for the? Uh, I also thought you said Richie Roulette, and I thought it sounds like a gangster on Goodfellas or something. <laughs> yeah, Richie Roulette. Hey, Richie Roulette, get on in here, boy. <laughs> they call me that because I spin around in circles all the time. <laughs> um, yep. You ready for? Yeah. You ready for Lady Vengeance? Yep. Hey, lady. Hey, you ready, lady? Hey, lady. This movie, man. Yeah, we'll just. I like the uh, that little bit of music there from the score. It the sounds skewer. like the skewer. It sounds like a classical bass, but like they did compose original music. Yeah. Nobody ever told me this movie was funny. The, the yeah, there is a lot there. This the one thing. One of my takeaways. There is a lot of movie in this movie. It is like it never stops. You know what I mean? Every second is important. Yeah. Like if you look away, you miss something. Like it was really like, this is a way to tell a story and keep people glued to the goddamn screen. Cause like it was, you said it's a lot of movie, but in a good way. Because oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. In a great way. Cause yeah. sometimes like, you know, when people say there's a lot of movie, this seems that could be music. It could be overstuffed. Oh no, no. I just mean that would like, it was one of those where like, you're so compelled. Like I just couldn't like, really like miss it, yeah. any any of it like it was like, like it's a I whole was, lot of movie as yeah, in like a whole lot of rosie is a whole yeah, lot of rosie yeah 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 it's like a heist movie it's a revenge movie uh there's a lot a lot of different types of things going on is it i'd always heard it called lady vengeance but it, then it was sympathy for lady vengeance it's, i think i think they're called both okay. um there's part of like Park Chang Wook's uh, Vengeance trilogy mm-hmm. with uh, Old Boy, uh, Sympathy from Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, and this is the final um, installment. And it's it's my favorite of the Vengeance trilogies or mm-hmm. Vengeance trilogy movies. It's just the one yeah. trilogy. I yeah. thought I'd seen this before. I hadn't, and it was awesome. Like it just kind of blew my mind the transitions between the scenes. Like when he used the, uh, you know, the door to do a wipe and <laughs> you, do you yeah. use yeah. the door to do a wipe? <laughs> we're yeah. back, we're back in the bathroom, guys. <laughs> you are desperate if you use the door to wipe. <laughs> it, is an, it, it is an outrageously beautiful movie. Yeah, it's a it director's. Is. It's like a director's movie. Yeah, it is. Every single scene is just so well thought out and like framed in the cinematography every it's like a i feel like they should show this in films classes yeah i feel like this would pair really well with a guillermo del toro like not one of his action movies but you know one of his more you know uh personal movies it felt like yeah. uh it reminded me a lot of coen brothers stuff and Co- oh for sure yeah, just the intensity of it yeah definitely it was very intricate an intricate intricately plotted i yeah i missed things whether or not it's because i was no, it, it's reading inter- it's, subtitles but i have questions it's because like there's so many time jumps and yeah. that was like, getting to me at first i was like yeah i don't know what's happening and, but then freddie was like relax and then I and was there's fine. so many characters and every character has kind of their own story too and there's a lot to process um like kelly said there's stuff happening all the time did anybody think of Orange is the New Black? A lot. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. 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 A little bit. So it's hard for me to summarize this movie because it's, like Kelly says, very complicated <laughs> because there's so many uh, elements going on. But the best way I can describe it is that uh, Gumja, she's the main character. Mm-hmm. She is in jail because she uh, helped. She was in a desperate situation. 
So she went to her old teacher for help because she was pregnant. And it felt to me like he didn't get her pregnant. She just happened to be pregnant. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, I thought he got her pregnant. I did it first too. And then I, I guess like she went to him because he was a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. And we have different views of teachers in our country and theirs. (laughs) Well, I guess that was the only, um, adult figure in her life that she could go to because I guess she didn't have a very good home life. He's the one that told her her shoes were sexy though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Maybe he is, maybe he is the father, but like, but I didn't. I thought she was pregnant before she went to him. Got to go to Mari, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, either way, yeah. So she goes to him uh, because she's been kicked out or left home. I forgot which one. And uh, she gets involved. Turns out that uh, he's a child killer, and they're doing this thing where he kidnaps a child. And he's going to get ransom for the child from the parents. But he ends up killing the child. And I'm fairly certain he got her pregnant. That is 100% okay. how I viewed this. The whole, I'm not saying that's for sure, but that's definitely, I, it, it lends a lot okay. of uh, heft to Yeah, it. that was my assumption. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's more interesting, but the, what I was reading about it, they, they, they didn't make that connection in what I was reading about. You know what I mean? I was looking for help. <laughs> and the help was there and that was part of what the help I found said to help me process things well it does um, if it he, if he is the father it kind of like adds another layer to it of nature versus nurture type thing that's an, another layer to this movie we'll get into it later anyway but he uh, makes her take the blame for the killing because he's gonna, he says like he takes the her daughter, and says if you don't take the blame, uh, I'm gonna kill her. So she gets sent to jail and gets blamed for the uh, murder, which is great. The one of the great things about this too is the way the reveal happens across the entire fucking movie. Yeah. like you get like you are almost never sure till you know what exactly. Like it took me a long time to piece together the whole fucking thing. Um, and I think it's just a really beautiful way of just like take like taking this time to like really lay it out and just give you little bits and chunks here and there. It's it's, it's like he amazing. saw Shawshank and was like, you know, that last part of Shawshank, my whole movie is going to be that reveal mm-hmm. of how a plan came together. <laughs> it's going to be that slowed down. It's going to be that one 10 minute section of Shawshank stretched out over over 120 minutes, but you're going to love it. Yeah. <clears throat> so she gets sent to prison and as soon as she gets there she has this plan for revenge and we're introduced to all these other uh, inmates and we get to see how she uses these inmates to further her plan and it, she gets yeah. she is posing she is like per, per, portrayed as a saintly character mm-hmm. but the whole time she's I don't know if she's actually helping these people out. She's or social, she, no social engineering, man. That's all or, that's or, going or on. Are you just, just, I didn't or is she just that. using them? It was a kind of. Both. It was a little of both. I like it was. I think she genuinely was a good person, but she's broken now, and there are means to yeah. an end. But there is some goodness underneath that comes out at the end. Well, that's a, that's the thing where I saw this movie different a little bit uh, this, this time watching it. The whole time I thought it was like she was a saintly character and she, the guy made her into this awful monster. But I kind of saw her as she was kind of a bad person to begin with and he just kind of made her even worse. Like, for instance, like what does she do early on that makes you think that? No, it's like the fact that the things that she does that she didn't necessarily need to do after she got out the... Uh, Why'd she kill the puppy? The puppy part. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah. You know that, I, I know I, that it was like her seeing if she could kill something. You think that's what it was? I, I kind of thought that too, but it was hard to say. But I was like, come on. But she killed people in prison already, so... But they were bad. So, but the person that she was planning to kill, the Mr. Beck, he yeah. was bad too, but the puppy was totally innocent. We don't know that. 
<laughs> we don't know why he was up for adoption. <laughs> this goes this goes deep, guys. It goes real deep. I don't know. Maybe she wanted to. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Never mind. Yeah, but it also there's that scene where where um kind of like the nature versus nurture thing where Jenny seems to be a very intense person too. Mm. Oh, her daughter that she yeah that ended up being adopted by some adorable Australians. Yeah, they're adorable Australians, and she had every opportunity and advantage in life, but she be, she has these really strange and intense moments too so yeah yeah is it it's a cool so, mirror yeah it's like is she intense because she became she came from her mother who was intense or was she just you know she's intense because she went to korea's top intensity <laughs> acting school <laughs> it's it's very subtly done i think what i took away um was that there it was like um she, you, you know uh she's an intense person um and she could go either way like she could either be like this really good person or she could be this really cold hard person and the facts of what happened to her kind of forced her to have to like shut off you know like really close off a part of herself so she could be cold and, and enact this this long term revenge, and that's where t- at towards the end, like you can't shut off part of yourself necessarily. Like I think it was about her not ultimately being able to shut off the the human part of herself. Yeah, yeah and when he's they do the fade to black and white throughout, you know, they tease you through the last part of the movie, <laughs> and you keep losing colors, and you're like, you don't notice it until they're gone, and. Yeah. uh they, I, and this is where it's going to get like super pretentious, right? Where you have to be oh, like, is this, this is thematically in the film where he was uh, wanting, I think, to show that this was a black and white situation. Mm-hmm. The, that killing the... the uh, Serial killer? Freddy Krueger character. Yeah. Um, that was just what had to happen. Like, it was clear. It was clear cut. There was no <laughs> ambiguity like there was earlier when she was like you could tell she, she may have had kind of a second thought about poisoning that lady for a moment yeah and like but like it she gets to the point where she and i'd, I'd be curious to know exactly at what storyline point it went full black and white um because i'm sure that's like whatever moment that is that is going to be that breaking point probably of of the switch the complete switch mm-hmm <laughs> So I have a couple yeah. questions here. Unless you want to keep going and all. Uh, like a, a while she's in prison, uh, she meets all these characters and she helps them out in certain ways. But she's helping them out because she wants to use their help when she gets out to help with nectar plan. So that's another layer of like, is she helping them out because she's a good person or is she helping them out? just so she can use them. Do you imagine what a great job recu- recruiter this woman would make? <laughs> she could be a great headhunter. <laughs> yeah. She'd be like the top. <laughs> but at, like the prison scenes are some, they're some of my favorite moments. Oh, they're so yeah. great. <laughs> like that moment where uh, we're introduced to, to the, the witch character. She's this notorious killer that um, killed her husband and she ate him. mistress and ate her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I and love first, that. And we're introduced to her like uh, when we're uh, meet this other inmate and somebody trips the inmate and she falls right by the woman's, the witch's crotch. Yeah. And the the witch is like, say hello to each other. (laughs) (laughs) The witch likes to demand oral pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel uh, bad for laughing at this. And she beats the shit out of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, She's the worst. Like it was like a, a very, um, dark moment but it was funny too in a way it, <laughs> she's like, it, it, he's making you like funny. he's like i got you i made you laugh at something now you're ashamed yeah well it, it's, i felt bamboozled it, in that moment it's, it's very common in korean uh movies especially like really dark ones to have these moments of like really dark comedy yeah, yeah. like you you notice that in a lot of like bon Joon ho movies too mm-hmm. so she gets out of prison and that's when she uh starts her plan 
Oh wait! And before you move away from the witch who ate her who ate her husband and his <laughs> yeah. mistress, that moment when the police that is like it looked like Beetlejuice or something, where well, she's yeah, that, out on the lawn on that old fashioned fifties era style like charcoal grill cooking up. Yeah, you know it was very much like EC Comics or or like you know it felt like it looked like a model when the way they shot it. Mm-hmm. It didn't look like reality at all. It looked fairy like a fairy tale. So in so many little moments like that. Well, this whole movie is kind of like a fairy tale. Oh because yeah, because it's not. It's told from somebody else's perspective too. It's the daughter's perspective. I think. Yeah, I think that's what I got from yeah, it that's at least. What I, yeah, yeah. That's how, that was my read on it, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. So she gets out of prison and she uh, enacts her plan and while to get revenge on Mr. Beck, the killer. But uh, while she, uh, the plan is enacted, she discovers that he is a child serial killer and he's killed like four or five other kids after. This is that uh, twist moment where you want to hop up and run out of the room and run back in. Yeah. You're like, ah! Because so it's, it's, it's complex yeah. enough at this point to carry the rest of the film and yeah, you're totally it could, hooked. It, it could have been just her revenge story, but then it becomes yeah. a revenge story for other people because she feels a lot of guilt for letting him go and killing all these other kids. When it goes from, no, I mean, you could say it goes from like a more selfish um, retribution to a more righteous retribution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that it was ever really self, but I'm just saying, you know, in terms of theme. It also, yeah, it gives you the weight, the moral authority when you're like, oh, it's driving the nail and it gets you. Let's get the audience on our side even more. Yeah. It's her 007. It's her license to kill. Yeah. So um, she finds out uh, that the the killer has all these souvenirs and tapes Ugh. of the killings. And she uh, finds all the parents of the murdered children and she lets them get revenge on him while also getting revenge, using kind of using them to get her revenge too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's many different types of re- revenge in this one. <laughs> yeah. The um, Sorry, I was just concerned about Amy. She just, she just laid down. You okay? Yeah. Did you laugh too hard? Yeah. Did you fart yourself, silly? <laughs> she laughed too hard at the uh, mention of ch- uh, child killings. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hard not to. Yeah. Yeah. The um. Sorry, I just so, lost like, my train yeah. of thought. Damn. Well, I was going to bring up that scene where she plays the tapes of the. This is oh like yes the the tapes of the children begging for their lives and being murdered. It, that's the worst, for the, man. For her, for in front of the parents, but you don't see anything. But you just mostly see the reactions of the parents. Yeah, and I think that is more intense than actually seeing the children the the murders themselves. Oh yeah, those kids, those child actors. That was kind of hard for me because I'm like those little babies are scared. Like, yeah. it, like there's no two ways about it. No little kids can't act that well. And it, I just kept thinking about like what they must have done to scare those little, cause they're the cutest little kids. And I'm like, Oh man, oh, yeah, they're, what a bad day for that kid. They're Asian kids. And those are the cutest ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're biased. <laughs> well, and there's just one scene where, um, I don't know if, was it a dummy or there's a scene where this little girl is tied uh, standing on a chair with a bag over her head. Oh yeah, it wasn't a dummy. He was hanging. Uh, he, okay, he was, yeah. that's how he killed that that one victim. That was awful. No, that yeah, but like I just can't imagine a child actor going through that. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, I don't think they murdered a kid. No, no, obviously that, but like the actual <laughs> kid. I'm sorry. Like I was <laughs> talking. You were. I didn't know if you were talking about like from a filmmaking standpoint or a story standpoint. Yeah, just the filmmaking standpoint. I, I, I'm with you now. Yeah, no, I don't think they murdered anybody. I don't. <laughs> want you to, like it was just very upsetting for me, and I'm sure most people to see real kids that, that are so little and vulnerable so upset. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, but it made it so potent. So I can't really argue with the method because I think without that, it wouldn't have been nearly as horrific as it was. Um, yeah. This came out before True Detective, right? 
Yes. Yeah. This is like 2005, I think. Because I feel like maybe True Detective may have cribbed from this scene for for, yeah. for their reveal. I got a definitely. I definitely got like a True Detective vibe, like influenced by this vibe. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So after she shows them the parents the tapes of uh, their children being murdered, she gives them an offer. Like everybody gets a chance to get their revenge on him by with weapons, and they each go in at a, one at a time and have a couple moments with him and to do whatever. And uh, they uh, not. And not even not all the parents are totally on board with it, which I found really interesting too. You just saw your child get murdered, and that one dad is so hesitant to do it. Yeah, it, it's well, crazy. some people just don't have violence inside of yeah. them. You know, yeah. that's I think that's the some. I think that's a comment too that like you know, what it's it's not even right or wrong. It's just some people have it in them, maybe. And then some people maybe just really don't. And some yeah. have way too much. Like yeah. one guy got greedy and tried to take, you know, they, they were portioning yeah, his whole- life out basically. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought that was uh, really interesting though, that they, they weren't all on the same page necessarily. And they had this, it felt like 12 angry <laughs> men or something like mm-hmm. the deliberation in the, you know, in the jury room, um, it was that and to use that like i think this he he must be like a big fan of just classic movies i think mm-hmm. he pulls from things like that and with that scene it felt like that and i thought i was like man imagine how great a nightmare on elm street prequel would be or new film if they had that level of care put into that the build up to them going after freddy krueger and burning him alive you know yeah. and yeah. It, it just is like so effective in this movie like you feel like this feels so real and you feel like you're kind of like in on it. Yeah. And how they decide who keeps the glove. Like how did Nancy's mom end up keeping the glove? Right. It was, uh, <laughs> they, they, they all did, uh, they did bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. <laughs> <laughs> but if it, if he, if this director had done that scene, you would know exactly why. And he probably would have done it without using any dialogue. And you'd yeah. be like, I can't believe she has that glove. Oh man. That's the most, moving yet frightening thing I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. So like um, the parents go in one at a time. They got their, their uh, Gallagher ponchos on. So they don't get blood on them Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with their weapon of choice. And you don't ever see any violence. You just see their aftermath of their ponchos covered in blood and little chunks and even, of watermelon. Yeah. <laughs> and even though it's like, it's a violent movie, but it's not violent, violent. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's more, uh, they do a lot of pull aways. Yeah. But it's but more the implied violence is so terrifying. The, the implication. Yeah. It's the implication and it really yeah. ups the, 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 you know, the feel. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Is that, Amy okay? Yeah. That's, she, okay. She's, she's just, uh, having a dizzy spell. Mm. And that sound was the chimes that reminds me it's time to take my medicine so that I don't oh. have to go back and live in that horrible hospital. Um, AZT Jeez. break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that so, was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All the parents get have their turn. And like, I think my favorite scene in the whole movie is the last person that goes in the room is this lone grandmother. Uh, she doesn't, choose to put a poncho on she's so like a grand dame character she's so like stately yeah. yeah and she just calmly walks into the room while everybody is reeling from what they've done and she just calmly walks up there and just looks at him with this stare and then she walks slowly walks behind him and then you see her walk out of the room and the next shot is Mr. Beck, he's dead, and the camera pulls away, and you see that he's stabbed in the back with kid scissors, and the, uh, there's a detective there, and he pulls him out, and you notice that they're kid scissors, so they've got a blunt end. Yeah. So the amount of force that she had to use to 
stabbed in the back of the neck. Safety scissors. They're like yeah. that they gave to Ralph Wiggum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, that just, to me, it just totally, you know, encapsulates how much hurt and rage he had to put those safety scissors in the back of his neck. Oh, yeah. It was just a very subtle scene, but it was just so powerful to me. It's subtle the way that she... Totally obliterated that dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just how calm she was afterwards. Yeah, she was a badass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was, uh, I loved this, Andy. I'm so glad yeah, that you picked this. Yeah, me too. It was really good. We're going to watch because uh, Elise wants to watch it. So we got it. We're going to watch it again, which is good because I, I do feel like there were, th- there were some details that I, I missed uh, on certain things and wanted to like get more clear on. Yeah, we haven't even talked about, uh, she, her daughter, she goes to Australia to uh, just reunite with her and get some closure. Oh, and yeah. there's a whole other movie right there, too. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of movies that could come out of this, really. Yeah. Uh, I, I uh, feel like I need to go back and watch some of his other stuff. I know I've seen Old Boy, and but then again, I thought I'd seen this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't trust you that saw, brain you, of mine. You saw a young man. <laughs> I saw a young man. That's the one. Yeah. Is that I saw Bart and Fink? <laughs> Is it Bart and Fink I saw? They're often confused with one another. <laughs> Old boy and Bart and Fink. <laughs> the Popeye movie. That's what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. This movie, like, just a description of it. It just seems so intense. But um, like Amy said, there's a lot of funny moments in it too. <laughs> oh yeah, it definitely has a good sense of humor about itself but it's dark yeah <laughs> it's dark humor yeah. it's like an uber violent princess bride <laughs> like the tone <laughs> is like it feels it does feel like fun the movie feels fun all the way through even in the darkest moments some fun is to be had and then like by the end you're like what a journey i've been on and some really ugly shit happened but i feel like uh i don't feel dirty about it no yeah it's a uh, it's a uh, it, in the end it's a righteous vengeance boy yeah He's yeah, a righteous I highly, dude. I highly recommend you guys check out his other movies. Like it's this is like the perfect topper to like the Avengers trilogy. Oh yeah. But um have you you have you seen any of those, Kelly? No, no. I've always wanted to um at least see Old Boy. Um and I know I've heard of Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, is that it? Yeah. yeah. Um and I just have never gotten around to it. But now yeah. I probably will because like this was really, really beautiful. Yeah, I think this is kind of like a combination of Old Boy and uh, Mr. Vengeance. Yeah. Because Mr. Vengeance is totally dark and serious. And Old Boy has the fantastical whimsical elements in it. Yeah. And I think Lady Vengeance combines both of them together. Nice. Yeah, it was really, it was great. Really beautiful. Yeah, I'll watch it again for certain. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, the end of each, uh, although I, I guess I should tease my pick, right, for next week? Yeah, tease it. Uh, I want to do what some call the greatest film ever made, Highlander. Yeah! No. Because Did we do th- I felt like, I don't know that we've ever done it. No, it was that act- it on the show. It was the action show. Oh, yeah. Shizaki it was a different have. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Different whole different beast. Yeah. So we can uh, talk Highlander. I'm I'm hoping Amy will become addicted to Highlander because of the big world building element. Of oh, I'm pretty sure you will because it's I've great. I've never seen it. So I'm pretty excited. It's, it's good stuff. It's a good time. Yeah, and you get it free a uh, French Canadian Scotsman. Oh, Amy yeah. uh, just saw Flash Gordon for the first time. Flesh Gordon. Uh, <laughs> we started with Flesh Gordon because it's the weaker of the films. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> the Mammary Mountains. <laughs> but we had a great time. Didn't we have a great time? Oh, with Flash Gordon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. At, the, at the Disney parks. <laughs> oh, we had the best time. Uh, <laughs> All right. So uh, we want to thank them patrons. Mm-hmm, them Beelzebubs. Them Beelzebubs. Anybody want to run with this list? Um, it's real. I can't really read it. It's blurry on me. Okay. I got you. You guys? All right. Nuvelis Comrank, who I I'll, saw before. I'll be down. downstairs soon, baby. Love you. Amanda Galecko. I'll be downstairs soon. <laughs> Ernest Perez. <laughs> Mother. <Ernie. laughs> Mark Watts. 
I'll be right down the stairs soon. Why do we Mark 1.21 gigawatts. Keep the pot roast warm, mother. Bill Farner. Mm-hmm. Bill, you come on down to from the up upstairs. <laughs> Blake. How many floors do we have? <laughs> Blake, bring up your basement, buddies. We're having a burg of smorg. Jeremy, Cassie, and Gamora. I hope we made it Love you guys. For your giant dog. <laughs> Jeff L. Jeff L. No one will ever know what the L stands for. Although I do. But you'll never know. It's a mystery. Nothing I comes between me and my Jeff's last name. <laughs> <laughs> I own a good win. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> Brandon and Emily. Sending what? all my love to you. Jojovlon. Jordash Joe Jeans Jivland. <laughs> oh, all those J's. Trying that out. Bill. B- B- Bill, the ghost, ghost of my heart. <laughs> the ghost of my heart. <laughs> Bill. Blaine Durder. Yeah, Blaine. Alyssa. We we stopped with our metaphor of everybody coming to Kelly's yeah. for dinner. <laughs> yeah. And him also being Mike Pence in my story for some reason. Hmm. Monica. Let's, Monica, come on. Come on over to my house. We're eating candy for dinner. Paul. Oh, Paul. <laughs> my owl. Paul G. I got no keys. The OG, the original G. Warren. Paul Warren G. <laughs> yeah. Paul. <laughs> regulate. Oh my God, Paul, is your middle name Warren? Because that would be everything. (laughs) Paul Warren G. Brian. Doc Brian. Dave Siebert. (laughs) Carla Gibson. (laughs) There go the choppers. (laughs) Dustin and his menagerie. Hi, I hope you're feeling okay. Yeah. Her buddy's sick. Lip wash is painless. She comes in many phases. Yes. Lynn Walsh. She's yeah, I come from, from a Lynn Down Under. She's from Down Under. Well. We did it. I survived it. it. Yeah. I survived Thank a you. weird little dizzy spell. Yeah. Thank you for such a uh, Andy heavy episode. Um, it was good. Good. Good times. Good yeah, times I had, were had. I had a great me. time. Good times, great country. Yeah. Great. 105. <laughs> All right, everybody. We love y'all. All right, bye. 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 Frankenstein was wondering if he should go to bed when his old buddy let her face put on dawn. So long.